What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Self Helpless Podcast. I'm Delaney Fisher. And I'm Kelsey Cook. And today we have such a fantastic guest. We have Jennifer Way here today. Jennifer is an intuitive consultant and certified in both intuitive coaching and integrated somatic trauma therapy. We are walking through a really fun manifestation exercise today. Um, Very, very cool. Before we get into it, Kelsey, do you have any hot announcements? Yes. So this is coming out in October. Um, I will have just been in DC, which I'm sure was a blast because I know we've got a bunch of helpsters there. So thank you to whoever came out and uh, I will be in Grand Rapids this weekend. And then Atlanta next month, we had to move the Burbank date in December to next year. So um, if you go to KelseyCook.com, you should be able to see when that is. Cause I think by the time this comes out, I will know. And then we've got a bunch of dates already for for next year. So in January, I'll be in Providence and Raleigh. In February, I'll be in Philadelphia and Portland. In March, I'll be in Cincinnati and back in Minneapolis, which I can't wait for. So yeah, uh, KelseyCook.com. How about you, Delaney? Fantastic. Um, If you are an entrepreneur and you are interested in scaling a minimalist business, you can head over to DelaneyFisher.com. I have a podcast called The Minimalist Business Podcast. It is uh, completely free. Uh, although it is a private podcast, you just sign up to receive it. it. It pops in your inbox. You can connect it to your favorite podcast app. And if you don't know what the hell a minimalist business is, uh, we handle all that over there. So check it out. Yes. And, <laughs> and before we get into the exercise with Jennifer, if you guys would like to do it with us, which we really recommend, because it's like, well, you're listening, you might as well do it with us um, because it certainly helped me. And I feel like it helped you too, Delaney. Um, You need two cups. One of them should have water in it. And then two little pieces of paper with a pen and tape, because you're going to tape a piece of paper to each cup uh, after you write something on it. So that's all you need. It's very, very quick and easy and very effective. So uh, if you, if you want to join, go ahead and grab those. And we also tell you throughout the episode, Hey, pause here so you can write your message pause, you know, just, just go at your own pace with the episode, but we think that you guys will really like it. Definitely. So here is Jennifer way. Jennifer, we are freaking stoked to have you here today. I am so excited to do this exercise with everybody, you know, Kelsey, you, everybody tuning in to me. So cool. I'm so excited. (laughs) <laughs> Yay! I'm so honored to be on the show. Hello, helpsters. Like, I'm so excited. Oh, we're really happy to have you. Thank you for being here. Yes. Um, before we get into all the juicy goodness, do you have a favorite or least favorite quote that you'd like to share with us? Yes, I do. Um, my favorite quote of all time is, let me read it. What we achieve inwardly will change outer reality. And that's by Plutarch. Ooh, I love that old Greek stuff. So, yes. Yeah. Yep. Did you like find that at a certain point in your life? Was it like a pivotal moment or what's the story? <laughs> it's, on, it's on my website on my homepage. <laughs> so yeah, well, I, it was, I found it in a book about intuition when I was just starting to really train into it. So yeah. Ooh. Fabulous. Awesome. That's a really great one. Hey, do you want to, do you want to share Jennifer, like uh, just kind of a brief overview on like, what is an intuitive consultant? What does that work really entail? What do you do? Who do you help? That good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So an intuitive consultant is, is essentially a psychic life coach. I like to use the word intuitive consultant because I have more of a business background and that's sort of important to me because I like to imagine myself as sort of like a spiritual mentor, that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I work with people individually. I work with people one-on-one. We do everything from sort of psychic readings to really getting energy scans. But I combine this with um, some training on sort of trauma-informed therapy and somatic therapy so that I can offer like actual counseling instead of being like, 
you know, that guy's going to leave you. <laughs> you know, it's like, I wanted to be a little bit more of a, so, so it's, it's psychic work, but it's also counseling. It's, it's really sort of like a, a real guide is what I consider myself. Mm, delicious. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Um, I'm very curious uh, if you're comfortable answering this. Is, yeah. is there anything that you're not really a fan of that you're seeing happening in the spiritual space right now? Or do you like it all? <laughs> I am so glad you asked that, Delaney. <laughs> I, so, so what I see out there right now, which I really, uh, which really kind of grosses me out, First off is like predatory marketing practices. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's really just kind of like convincing people through fear or like emotional triggers. That's kind of stuff that's happening in the spiritual field that I, I do not jive with at all. Um, like we're very capitalistic. We live in a capitalism marinade. So of course it's going to take on things like that, but it's, it's extremely um, just icky. That's kind of my big word for that. Um, And the second thing is really like this idea of a hierarchy uh, where some people just like more advanced than others, or some people are just like closer to enlightenment than others. It just kind of creates something that in the spiritual world, it's, it doesn't really exist. So, so it just seems a little strange. Um, You know, there's, there's this idea of like a wrong way and a right way. And I don't really subscribe to that. I think it's, it's all comes down to the individual and, and the last thing that really bothers me is just like practitioners, leaders, teachers, whoever, who just like take themselves too seriously. I mean, like your, your spiritual path must be like hysterical. Like it's, it's all really funny. Like it's, it's people who take themselves too seriously in this field don't really understand what energetics are and kind of like getting people to that next level of really breaking through. So so yeah, those are my little pet peeves. <laughs> oh, I like it. Kels, do you have any yeah. questions for Jennifer before we dive into the exercise? I don't think so. I, I'm just excited to do this and like see and feel you do your thing. Yes, I'm so excited. So Jennifer, would you mind just introducing like, what is this exercise? Why does it work? Because for a lot of people, this might sound really woo-woo and strange what we're about to do. That's because it is. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Yes. Um, it, it really, really is. I mean, so so two cups is a popular manifestation method for jumping timelines, and jumping timelines is very much a, a woo woo kind of uh, an idea concept. Um, so I like to think of it as like you're intentionally and ritualistically shifting yourself into a different paradigm or like a more preferred reality. And I do have to shout out Jessa Reed. Jessa Reed, everyone check her out because I learned this from her. She's a comedian. She's also into spiritual stuff. Yeah, she's fantastic. Yes. One of my favorite This Is Not Happening stories uh, through Comedy Central (laughs) as YouTube of all time. Yeah. Oh, cool. I have to look at Absolutely. Uh, and this, yeah, thank, this is all I owe, I owe all of this to just a read. Um, so jumping timelines, I just want to like explain it in a way that I think people might understand. Like there's so many movies out there right now about like alternate realities and like parallel storylines and like, what if she chose this or didn't make the subway or whatever. So you can think of it like that. Um, like in my day, it was that movie sliding doors with Gwyneth Paltrow. It's basically <laughs> like, this is you choosing a particular path, like deliberately, and one in which you feel the way you want to feel. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. And, Love it. and yeah. <laughs> that, that makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Is there something happening like in the body or the brain or something when it comes to like intention setting? Have you, have you noticed anything like that or like any kind of neuroscience potentially behind it? So, so how I would explain it best is that we are, we are walking nervous systems and our nervous system is biomagnetic. It's electric. So, so vibes are real. That's a, that's a very much a real thing. And the thing about this activity, which might connect it to, to what you're asking is just that this is about feeling, uh, and it's also about taking action. So you're doing the physical action, which is in ritual, it's a very powerful thing. You are embodying the action and you're also getting yourself into a state of the the correct sort of focus that you want to go in so what you're really doing is you're kind of combining and your nervous system 
has to be in a sort of balanced state. It doesn't have to be, but it's, it's getting your nervous system into a balanced state so that you can really get into the feeling of, of these paths, especially the one that you want to go into. Um, I like to think of this as you really want to balance the sort of yin and yang. It's kind of the like less woo woo. I mean, it's pretty woo woo, but it's like a little less of a, you know, out there kind of a concept. You've got these sort of two elements. You've got the the masculine, which is the yang, and you've got the yin, which is the feminine. And, you know, one is more passive, one is more active. And so so those kinds of things kind of coming together because, you know, the new age world is very woo woo and touchy feely. But this is actually an, an activity that's going to bring the physical element as well, because it's not only about the physical action of, of moving the water from one cup to another and then drinking it. It's also going to be taking actionable steps in this new path. So it's not like you're like making a wish and you're like, OK, I'm just going to wait for it to happen. It's really going to involve some yeah. work on your part to kind of to kind of do it. So I, I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, about science definitely. Necessarily. Yeah. But I mean, if you think about it, like. Yeah. We know that feelings matter and they affect us physically because we look at stress. Everybody knows that stress comes from feeling and feeling uh, creates a situation where your body can get very sick from it. So what we're doing is we're sort of applying that idea of feeling, but we're, we're doing it sort of the opposite way. So we, we want more of like that loving, that really kind of resonant feeling when you're getting yourself ready, really accessing the feeling of what it's going to feel like in this new reality. Oh, I love, I love the balance of the feeling and the action that mm, we love yeah. balance on this podcast. Okay. Yes. So should we get into it? What do we do? Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's do it. I mean, so, so everyone is going to need two cups. Do you guys have your mm-hmm. two cups? Yes, I do. Woo! Our baby. Yes. Awesome. And I just want to add, you can do two of the same cups. If it means something to you, you can do two different cups as well. I prefer doing two different cups because I like to feel the shift into the next. It just, again, you're just convincing yourself to get into the feeling like whatever, whatever you have to tell yourself to get into the feeling. So you've got your two cups. And then what you're going to do is you're going to think of something that you really want to shift into. Now, If you're new to the process, I do recommend that people just kind of focus on one shift. You can do a bunch at one. I mean, you can write on a, you can write a whole list. Like I want this, I want a new car. I want to be, you know, fit. I want to whatever. And then, you know, you can do it that way. But for the purposes of today's show, we're just going to do, we're just going to focus on one thing. So on one piece of paper, you're going to write down kind of your current reality. So we want to sort of focus on the feeling of it, Mm -hmm. right? So yeah, the first one for me was I eat for comfort and feel bloated. So that was my current reality. Okay. And honestly, the goal really for me was to be healthier and lose weight, but I didn't use those words. And then the new one would be I eat to nourish my body and feel light. So that's, that's kind of like more of a balanced example. Like a non-balanced example would be I'm too fat and like no one loves me. And then the new, like the new timeline would be like, I am thin and everyone loves me, (laughs) but that's because it's coming from an unbalanced place. We, we want to, we want to make sure that we're looking at something for more of a grounded, realistic shift. Does that make sense? Okay. So So, for example, if mine, if I, if I'm trying to like meditate more in my life, my starting point uh, might be, um, I don't meditate consistently or something. And then my new jump might be, I meditate for 15 minutes a day, every day, like something that specific. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So listeners pause here for a second and write your two pieces of paper. Cause we're going to do the same. Yeah. So your starting point, the, the reality that you're currently in, and then your the, the jump that you want to make, which is the new reality that you want to yeah. be in. You know, another example could be uh, current, li- current, uh, current reality is I, I work a job that I hate. I don't feel like I'm going anywhere. And then the new shift can be like, I work at a job where I'm appreciated, where I'm supported and where there's a clear path or a clear path for me to, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Move up. Yeah. Totally. I'm going to write my little yeah. 
I actually, I, I got two different pens too, to symbolize. <laughs> so I got two I different cups and two different pens just to, because I'm real type A. <laughs> well, no. well, they go home. All right. Okay, listeners, we're going to write ours, so write yours too. Yes. Okay. Okay. I believe I got mine, if it's helpful to hear what I actually wrote down. <laughs> so. <laughs> My starting point is I don't meditate consistently and it makes me feel like shit. And then the, where I actually want to be, I meditate every day for 15 minutes. I would also add just as a little tweak oh, yeah. uh, and I feel oh. balanced or grounded or something. Yes. And I love I, that you're adding the feeling of it because that's, that's such a big part of the exercise. Yes. You know, water really, we're, we're moving water from one glass to another. And as you're writing and affixing to one glass, you're going to hold it and you're going to really sort of deliver, infuse that glass of water with the feeling. Water, because of its quality, is just extremely, uh, it can hold a vibration. Mm. And you can even do this with you know, if you, if you have a glass of water and you just like, I need some love, you can literally like hold the glass of water mm. and be like, I'm giving you so much love water. It sounds ridiculous, but like, who are you hurting? So you're just kind of like, I, I love, you know, this water. I love this water. It's nourishing me. And then you can drink it and then you can take in that love. Okay, cool. It's just so, little fun things. Yeah, no, I love, I love any kind of ritual symbolism. You know, I love all that stuff. Um, so, okay, my new one, if it's helpful to hear anybody, I don't meditate consistently and it makes me feel like shit. And my, where I want to be is I meditate every day for 15 minutes and I feel fucking awesome. Yes. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like me. So <laughs> gotta make it personal. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. I am ready. Yes. Let's hear it. Okay. So uh, my current state about the specific thing I wanted to work on. So I wanted to work on letting go of guilt surrounding caregiver burnout. Um, our listeners know that I've talked about being a caregiver the last, um, gosh, over a year and a half now. And it's it's just a really hard thing to find balance with. So um, I said, I feel burnt out physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally being a caregiver. I feel guilty no matter how much care I give because I still can't fix the situation. Mm. So... That's my current. Yeah. And then my receiving glass for what I want to feel says, I have healthy and realistic boundaries for the amount of care I'm able to give others. I make my health and well being a priority. I'm still loved and I do my best. I love Amazing. it. Amazing. That is Amazing. Fantastic. I have one tweak for you. Yeah. Instead of I make my, that was a second oh, thing. My Just health take- and well being are a priority. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay more like definitive yes and yeah. like and like it's already happening exactly i love it Ooh. fantastic that was really it. beautiful no oh, that was like the guys. that was a <laughs> like yours was great delaney but that one oh, was no it's fine mine was more like a habit i'm trying to kick that was like real deep and lovely <laughs> <laughs> no i love it i mean not everybody's going through something deep all the time and i just saw a great quote on instagram that's kind of like a duh quote but it was just helpful to hear again that um, we are all gardens, not machines. And so we need different things every day. Like some days we need more water than other days. Some days we need more sun, some days it's, and it's just like, it was good to be reminded that every day is different and your needs every day are different. We're not like a, you know, you can't just follow the same recycle. Yeah. It's anyway. So yeah, it's so great. I love it. I love it. Thank you for using that example. It's really perfect. Oh yeah. So so you have water, right? You have it in the the current timeline glass. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what you're going to do is, I'd like you to hold that glass with two hands, and what? And you can close your eyes if it feels right. Just sort of take a nice deep breath, and really infuse this glass with your current energy, which shouldn't be a problem because you're in it. <laughs> so you know how it feels. So really. Dr- access that feeling inside of you and take as long as you need. And if it feels heavy or any of those feelings, that's okay. That's what we want. Okay. 
Awesome. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take this, that glass. Now you've already affixed the new timeline to your second class, the receiving glass. So right now you're going to ritualistically <laughs> pour <laughs> your water into your new timeline glass. Sounds like I'm peeing on the pot. So I'm sure I'm not. There we go. <laughs> oh no, I have to, now I'm thirsty. Okay. And now what you're going to do is you're going to hold this new timeline in your hands. And you're going to do the same thing that you just did with the other one. You're going to access the feeling of this new timeline. So hold it in your hands and really, you can visualize, imagine almost like you're delivering an energy into that glass of this new timeline. And this new timeline is going to, it, it might take a sec to really get into that feeling. So take as long as you need, really getting into that feeling of this is where it is. This is, this is what I am in now. This is my reality. Whew. This is a good exercise. <laughs> yeah, this is, man, I mean, it's just weird to even feel a shift in the energy that quickly, my own energy is like just wow. speaking from my experience, weird. Wow. You can take the drink, drink the water. I'm assuming you can drink the whole thing, right? So get like just full symbolism. Yeah. Just chug. No. <laughs> <laughs> tastes like freedom. No, it tastes like a new timeline. Mm. You're really taking it in. Yeah. Congratulations. You have shifted timelines. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Fuck yes. It was so interesting because my current reality cup, when I held it, felt very like buzzy, reactive, all over the place. And then my second one, when I held it, felt very grounded and calm. And so just even the stark contrast, you know, by the, like the power of setting an intention and actually taking time to do it is, is pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Um, by the time that I was reading the words on the second glass and really trying to get into that energy, I realized how much I associate, um, well, I was going to say current reality, but now it's my past reality. Yes, that's I, right. I guess, <laughs> I guess um, how much that is associated with me. Like when I see myself like that, I see myself as a little kid again, where mm. I can't really speak up for myself. I can't really have boundaries and I'm just trying to make people happy basically and, and not really putting myself first. And then this current reality, having boundaries, putting myself first, it's so much more of like the adult version of myself, Absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's easy with family members to revert back to feeling like a kid in ways that aren't helpful uh, or healthy so this was a good reminder to be like yeah you got to take care of yourself absolutely it's yeah. really hard to draw that differentiation when you're in that environment again yeah we really do revert back to that old energy and and i'll just say this kelsey you know you might find that that old energy comes back and but what i would say is is just allow that sort of child to come through and really just kind of allow her to integrate with the new adult you there's yeah. almost like and really welcome her in and make sure she knows that you're taking care of her you're a yeah. caregiver you yeah. can also take care of that little child part of yourself yeah totally yeah. that's yeah that's great advice yeah. i love that uh jennifer have you done i'm assuming you've probably done this exercise many times for yourself or maybe not um and <laughs> Have, have there been any kind of like shifts or transformations, you know, among you or any clients that you can share? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, the one that I did was that sort of the weight one where I was looking to kind of, uh, you know, change my body up. Uh, and I just thought it would be a good starting off point. So I had written down a lot of things and, and actually the one thing I do want to add for the exercise is the first cup I want you to tear that list up. So, so you're going to really tear it up 
burn it if you want to make sure it's safe like make sure it's in ceramic or something, but, but really you're going to, you're going to rip that old timeline up and you're going to forget it. And then the new paper, um, just put it somewhere, put it in a drawer. You don't have to look at it every day because right now you can trust that you've already jumped. That's another way. And then your mind kind of won't keep going back to it. Like, did it, did it work? Did it happen? Cause that's shifting the energy back. So you just, you want to make sure that you, you trust that this worked and that it happened and you don't have to think about it anymore. Ooh, so mine is in little tiny pieces of paper. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I the the one that I did was was really about body. And um, the other aspect that I want to say to this is when you shift timelines, this is a little bit of a disclaimer, and, and this kind of happens to me. Um, you might be surprised at how quickly the old timeline really falls away. And sometimes when the old timeline falls away, other stuff might fall away with it. Um, Cause it's all, it's like this big web. So, so you want to just be aware that it can shift significantly depending on what energy you're moving into. So for me, when I was doing this sort of like weight loss shift um, you know, like the, a month or two later, I, I was having all of these like realizations. Each step was necessary. And I can see it now looking back that it all brought me into this shift, which is the current timeline. And I, I had forgotten what I wrote because part of me thought that the old, like it didn't work. I was like, God damn it. You know, I was supposed to lose like 20 pounds already, but I had forgotten the wording. I found the old the the new timeline note recently when I was cleaning out a drawer and the truth was the wording that I used was exactly the new reality that I was in so it was like mm -hmm. I I am more balanced I eat for nourishment like I'm healthy it wasn't like oh I'm you know super slim or whatever so so it was really cool to see that even though my mind had remembered it being one thing when I looked at the actual paper I was like oh dang that's great Ooh. Yeah, that's a big thing in feng shui too, is being really like without getting so superstitious that you're like afraid to say anything and mess things up, but just really being clear on what specifically you want when you're setting intentions and stuff. Exactly. And yeah. really just trusting that it happened, that like it already happened yeah. and that you're in it. Yeah. How do you guys feel right now? Oh, good, dude. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel emotional, which is hard because it's like I, I wanted to do that specific thing for this exercise because that is something that's like really affecting me lately. But I also don't really want to get emotional on the podcast right now. So I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm just feeling things and I'll probably deal with it after we stop recording. <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and also one thing that might help uh, is is really kind of thinking about what the action steps might be for you. Like yeah. what are some things that you've tried before that do help you move into better boundaries that yeah. work for you, you know? Specific. Yeah. Yeah. We, and I did just have um, a conversation with another family member about if they were able to kind of like step up at all and, and help me in certain ways. And that has taken a little bit off my plate. And even just that has made a really big difference in the last couple of weeks. So, um, it's, it's funny, like, even though that has helped me with some of the feeling of burnout, there's still that guilt that's associated with like taking time for myself. So, yeah, yeah. that's so normal. Um, is there any exercise or something that you tell people to do who might struggle with like urgency or I'm trying to think of like how I approach projects or work or, um, this feeling of just like kind of being uneasy when I know I want to get somewhere and it's yeah. taking a lot of time to get there, yeah. you know, just impatience, urgency, anything like that. Yeah. Um, so, so it, it, it's, it's, again, it's like that anxious energy, which can go one of two ways. It can be excitement, right? So anxiety or anxiousness to kind of like get going is because you really have so much stuff that you want to get done. You really like have an energy that's just waiting to kind of like rush out of the gates. So that can be sort of like, just, just to know that for yourself, like, okay, this energy that's coming, this like kind of 
you know, really intense energy, uh, it's not a bad thing. So let me just kind of make sure that I'm aware that, you know, in that context, this, this can be like an exciting kind of a thing. I would also say, <laughs> and this is like so typical, like spiritual field stuff is getting grounded. Because a lot of times that sort of energy, that sort of frantic, it, it lives up here and, and we live up here <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. So you want to kind of bring it down into your body, bring it down kind of like into your heart, into the feeling stuff. And if, if we, you know, again, like going back to that yin yang thing, we do live in a world that very much values and focuses on yang energy. So very sort of directive, masculine, very action oriented, very linear, as opposed to that sort of yin, which is more sort of mysterious and intuitive and compassionate and messy, you know, and we want to just make sure that we can balance them. And a lot of times that really is a mind body thing. So you want to, if you are finding yourself in that state, really try to find the best grounding method for you. And grounding can be anything that brings you back into your body, really anything that brings you back into your body. And it's different for everybody. So there are other things you can do. I like to say, <laughs> my favorite thing is like, if you know your astrological sign, you know, if you know, if you're like a major, like water, earth, air, or fire, do you guys know what you are? This is so funny. Cause you were both, I was just about to say Delaney and I are both Aries. And when you're talking about the masculine feminine stuff, Delaney and I both deal with like some things in our life where we're like, oh, we're being like super fiery right now. But that's okay because <laughs> so grounding, this is a, I, I sort of, I, this is like some wisdom that I received that every, whatever sign you are or like whatever element you are, that's what I should say. That's where you prefer your feet. So like air, like a fire sign really <laughs> likes her feet in the fire oh. or you like to like, you know, like if you think about it that way, like a water sign likes walking in the water, like ocean. That I love warm so baths. I take a warm <laughs> bath almost every night, even when it's 115 out in the summertime. I fucking love a bath. It is, you know, it's my happy place. This is so weird because <laughs> I never don't have socks on. Like my feet. <laughs> My feet are chronically cold. I think it's like a circulation thing, genetics. Like my dad and grandma also always have like terribly cold feet. So I just always love having socks on. I sleep with socks on. I never don't have socks on. And that is so, like for my feet to feel, cold, it just like, it makes me insane. I can't have it. They have to be on fire. They have to be on fire. And like air signs, Weird. air signs. It's a little sexual though, if you're like your feet in the air kind of a thing, but like, I think more of like a swing, you oh, know, sure. like having your feet, I'm an air sign. So I'm very much like, woo. And then earth, if you're an earth sign. And again, not if it, grounding is also like walking on the, the bare ground with, you know, no socks on, which I can't stand. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's where that download came from. I'm like, why can't I walk on the grass? <laughs> like a yeah. good new age hippie. Like, why can't I do that? And it was because it's like, you're an air sign. You, you're, you like your feet in the air. Wow, I love that. That is Weird. so cool. What a, what a simple, hot tip <laughs> yeah. anyway, for anybody who knows what there is. Is it a horoscope? Or it's, it's really like your element. So your, your horoscope, if you know, like I'm a Gemini, which is an air sign. So it's, okay. it's, it's very much like whatever sort of dominant element is in your chart. I love that. that is so yeah, funny. that is really funny. That's really, really funny. <laughs> I am like, I'm so curious to hear what like the listeners would like be like, that's true. That's not true. That doesn't hold up. I'm just like curious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So awesome. Kels, do you have any, any questions about anything? Um, I don't think so, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for, for doing this exercise with us. I think it was hugely helpful for me and I hope that our listeners can take a second and as Delaney and I talk about, I mean, that's what you're saying with not wanting to stop to meditate. I know it feels hard to stop and do something for yourself. To be honest, I don't know if I would have gotten myself to do this unless it was scheduled today and we had to do it for the podcast. Yeah. But I am telling you guys listening that if you can just take a second to do it, you really will feel better, I think. A thousand percent. Oh, so good. Kels, we should do like some kind of follow-up episode soon where we kind of look back yeah. at the line and let the listeners know where we're at. 
you know, and check yeah. it out. Yeah. Really cool. Um, Jennifer, thank you so much. Is there anything that you'd like to leave people with? And also, where can they find you and your work and all that good stuff? Oh, absolutely. First of all, I just want to thank you guys so much for having me on. Like, it means the world to me. I'm so excited. It was so much fun. You guys are amazing. Oh, um, Delaney, you know, I love you. And Kelsey, <laughs> I love you now, too. I can oh, say thanks. That. That's there. so nice. Thank um, you. <laughs> but, um, so people can find me at jenniferway.com. It's it's W A I, uh, and I'm not on social media anymore, but, but everything is on my website. Um, you can go to my website and download a free guide to, uh, figuring out who the fuck you are. Um, it's just sort of like a cute little guide, you know, help you wade through the cesspool of modern spirituality. Um, you can also <laughs> check out my podcast, uh, which is called the self consciousness podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so, uh, and we just, I talk about spirituality, we do interviews and, and we just try to eliminate all the BS when it comes to the spiritual new age industry. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. It was so great to meet you. So, so much. How are you feeling? I, I feel, I feel more grounded. Do you feel is, different? Yeah. Yeah. It was just funny because I came, I came here today feeling a little bit buzzy. Like I get a little bit you know, mm-hmm. too excited energy where I can't really like ground myself very well. And I just kind of buzz around all day. So mm-hmm. I'm like leaving the episode feeling way more calm. Good. Yeah. What about right. you else? Yeah. Like, like I mentioned, definitely feeling a little more emotional right now. I'm also about to start my period. So that, you know, that doesn't help anything. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hormones are raging, yes. but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it, I think because this thing I'm going through is something that I have tended to be a little bit more private about. It's one of those things that I bet after the episode today, I'll probably do some journaling and try to kind of keep integrating what I felt today into into everything going forward. But it it really did help me. And I do feel a shift into it's almost like I gave myself the permission that I feel like I keep waiting for other people and other people are giving me permission. Like other people in my life are like, yeah, you, you have to take care of yourself. Right. It's, it's so important. It's the airplane oxygen mask analogy where it's like, you have to take care of yourself or else you're not going to be able to take care of other people. Right. And that all is so logical in the moment and makes so much sense. But when you're feeling that guilt and that pressure to, really put yourself into a place where you are just fried, just completely fried in every way. Um, it's hard to remember that analogy. So something about this, it's like it connected me to myself and I got to kind of give myself the permission, which I think is ultimately what I've needed <laughs> rather oh. than other people telling me. Oh, that's so, so good. Then. Yeah. And I know that for me, I know that there's a statistic too. Like when you write something down, it's more likely to happen. I think it's like your goals or, you know, whatever it is that you're writing down, it's like makes it more likely to happen by like 43% higher. It's like a huge statistic or something. Yeah. So even yeah. just that alone, taking five minutes or less to actually write a couple things down is already going to shift you. And then on top of like, the energy, the energy and the symbolism and the ritual behind it. Um, I just think it's so cool. And I know like, you know, you're, you're a fan of feng shui, which is intention setting with, with, you know, physical objects and stuff like that. So yeah, this is like, you know, this is our jam. So I'm excited to check back in with you maybe in like the next month or two and see what kind of like shifts you might be experiencing or feeling or how you're uh, differently, you know, it'll be, it'll be totally. checking with each other. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Cool. Well, we, well, we keep our feet warm. That was so crazy. Oh my God, so funny. <laughs> That's so funny because that, that is absolutely my preference of like, how do I want to ground myself, ground myself? I always take a hot bath. It does not matter what the weather is. Nothing. That's what I do. Yeah. I, even in the summer in crazy heat, I very rarely wear sandals or flip-flops yeah. because I just, even though I know it's going to be hot outside, I like th- my feet being in socks. <laughs> it's just so warmer. funny. And like when she, when she described all the different signs, right? What is it? It's, it's air, water, fire, earth or something. Yes. Out of all those, I much prefer hot water than like 
you know, walking around on the dirt or right on a swing. I feel like that would make me feel less grounded or, right. um, you know, what was the other one? Hot, like cold water. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fire totally makes. <laughs> I know it's, that was cool. I love, I love that. Yeah. Um, so do you want to get into a couple segments? Yeah. What you got? So I, um, I just had an especially crazy travel experience over the weekend. So I had shows in Houston and, um, I was on a vacation for a couple days beforehand. And so my flight was supposed to get into Houston like two hours before the show, which is cutting it a little close for me, but I was like, eh, everything will be fine. So my first, first leg of my flight at a layover in Chicago, it was delayed by almost two hours because there was a an air show in Chicago, like an old timey Wright Brothers air show. Oh shit. And air traffic control couldn't manage like the nor- normal regular flights and the air show. So like people couldn't get into Chicago. And I'm like, this is crazy to me that this old form of entertainment is yeah. fucking up like actual flights that people have spent all this money on. It's like their precedent over yes. daily operations. I'm like <laughs> fucking go watch Maverick. Go watch Top Gun. Go watch go watch it it's on the screen. But like it can't be happening if it's going to fuck up all this other shit. I just like that was so crazy to me that that was an actual reason why people's flights couldn't land. Right. I'm like, we got to prioritize. <laughs> this, right. can't, this can't be fucking things up. So I get to Chicago and my flight has already left. Like my, my second flight is already gone. Oh, shit. The, the website is showing that the only other option gets in after my show is done. And like, you know, all, it's a sold out show. And I'm sitting there like, God, like, I will be devastated if I have to miss this and let everybody down, you know, everybody who bought tickets. So I went up to the United counter and I said, Hey, this is what's going on. Is there any other option? They said, well, there's this one flight that would get you in like at the start of your show, but there's only standby room available. So we can put you on the standby list and you can wait a couple hours for that flight. So they put, they put me on the standby list. I'm number five on standby. And I'm like, I mean, it, they're saying it's a sold out flight at oh. a number five on standby. I mean, what are the, Oh yeah. You're how, fine. how is this going to work? So I sit in the O'Hare airport, which is like truly the worst. I, I hate that airport so much, <laughs> so fucking much. And, um, they start boarding. There's like a weight, um, issue with the bags. They're saying we're, we're overweight restriction on bags. They get everybody on. They start going through the standby list. They get to the fourth person and one of the guys boarding the plane goes, we can't take anymore. (gasps) I don't think there's another seat. And I'm sitting there going, please, please don't let me be like the one person that gets cut off. And this woman looked again at the flight map. There was one middle seat left in the very last row (gasps) of a like 38 row plane. Oh my gosh. So I got on, literally, they let me on. They closed the boarding door. Holy <laughs> shit. I sit on this almost, I was like a, I don't know, two, three hour flight. I land. My show has already been going on for seven minutes and I'm sitting on the plane. Oh, geez. I got into a lift. It took me, I don't know, 45 minutes to get there in a lift. And I walked straight from the lift <gasps> onto the stage. Oh. In my in my airplane clothes. Oh my god! Did, your, did, your, did the host opener have to just kind of stretch until? You yeah, the there? the club added a couple local comics to the lineup, and yeah. then I did. I ended up doing like I think maybe five minutes less than I usually would have just to keep the show from going way too long. Yeah, but um, oh. I I just couldn't believe that it ended up working out so for those of you I know this episode is coming out you know quite a few months after this happened but well I guess a couple months those of you especially who are at that Friday show in Houston you were wonderful and thank you for being patient and uh it was crazy I've never like performed on stage in my thank god I I usually dress so poorly on the plane like full sweatsuit just like very not great I happened to put on like 
some joggers. I looked not horrible, but it was still like, I would never usually wear this on stage. So <laughs> that was my crazy. And I did a, I did a show and then I went back to the hotel and shoved uh, tacos in my face. Oh like, my gosh. What a day. Was your fucking adrenaline pop coursing through your veins? <laughs> my God. It's just, yeah, it, it's, t- it's too Holy much. Shit, man. Oh wow. That that's intense. Yeah. How um, about you? Yeah. Oh, well, something really horrific happened recently. Uh, definitely the fuck, the fuck moment. Um, okay. So I was folding laundry and then, oh my God, Goose is doing something weird. I know he is so <laughs> cute. This is about Goose, by the way. Hey, get out of there. Um, if you guys want to see the cutest little pup, <laughs> go watch this on YouTube right now. God, he is so cute. Getting into some trouble trying to eat something. Yeah. Um, so I was folding clothes in my bedroom or I was putting some laundry away and I turn around and Goose is sitting on my bed with his entire penis outside of his body, his oh. entire dick and looked like his balls were out as well. It was so horrifying. I like went into full panic mode, shock thinking, oh my God, I got to take him to the, the, the emergency vet. He, he needs surgery. Then he pull his penis out. What the hell's going on? I screamed to Cam and I'm like, Cam, no, I've never seen this happen in a, to a dog's body. He's freaking out like, what the fuck's going on? He's kind of like thinking that he's going to see him like, at, you know, in a, like having a seizure or something like that. Right. And he, he I mean, Cam is also shocked, but he's like, okay, calm down. Like, I'm, and I'm like, calling the vet. And I just, I am just freaking out. Like, I, I don't know how to explain this to you, but my, my dog's entire penis is outside of his body. Is this normal? What do I do? What the fuck? And they're like, okay, so what you're going to want to do? And like, does he need surgery? Do I, should I bring him in? <laughs> I'm freaking out. Oh my God. What do I do? Do you have any coconut oil? And I'm like, I don't know. I can have my husband get some coconut oil. Oh my God. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. And I'm yeah, they're like, step number one. So it's okay. Like we don't want it to be out very long because then it could have some issues. But if you can get some coconut oil and put some coconut oil on his penis and help it get back inside its body. I yeah. No. Okay. So this lady's telling me, me to jerk my own dog off on the Yes. Phone. No. I know. I, and, and so I'm like, okay, so what happens if I can't get it back in? And they're like, if it goes in back in within the hour, you're fine. If it doesn't, if it doesn't go back in within the hour, just go ahead and bring him in and we'll help you with that. So immediately, Cam, I'm like, Cam, you got to go to Trader Joe's and get some coconut oil. I don't know how many coconut oil. And so Cam freaking runs over to get some coconut oil. I am picking Goose up and kind of just like shifting his body a little bit to maybe it would go in a little bit on its own. It is the freakiest, grossest thing I've ever seen because I have seen like a dog's penis come outside their body a little bit, like a teeny tiny little lipstick. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Out. This was not that. I grew up with dogs my whole life. This was the entire thing outside. So I'm oh. kind of, I'm picking him up. I'm trying to wiggle him, wiggle it back in without like touching it too much because I don't have the coconut oil quite yet. And I was able to get it in about halfway. Cam gets home. I grab the fucking coconut oil. I put it all over my dog's dick. Oh my God. <laughs> I gotta put it on the tip and the hair and everything. And slowly like get it back in there. And you guys, I, I'm in a state of panic and just this not only ruined my night, it ruined my entire week. I mean, I it was it was fairly challenging for me. I'm not great in emergency situations. If you know me, I tend to panic and I'm very useless. So um we finally get it back in. Everything's fine. I even like trim his little wiener hair just in case that was part of the problem. Like it gets too long, so maybe that got caught. I do all this things to th- this thing to his oh penis, God. and the entire process, Goose is just chilling. He's fine. He's not panicked. It's no big deal. He's just sitting, looking at me like, "What's the issue here, lady? You're losing your shit for no reason." Um, but yeah, long story short, it's uh, summer. I'm just trying to let my dick breathe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm having a nice time. Maybe yeah. I've done it a little too hard, but you need to calm down. Yeah, uh, I'm a wind sign. I would like my dick to feel a breeze. It's, I, I know you don't understand, but. <laughs> so thank God. Um, no, it went back in and I just Googled it. And apparently it's some kind of issue that all, some dogs have where their entire penis can go outside of their body. It's like some kind of name or term for it that I hadn't even known about or heard of. 
So now that's just something I worry about with uh, my youngest child is that his dick might fall out sometimes. Like what the fuck is nobody prepared for that prepares you for that shit as a dog mother. So horrifying. I don't know how it happened. I I just don't know because he's so little still that like, it's very possible it came out a little bit and then he got curious and he like yanked on it. I I don't know. It was horrific. It ruined my entire week. I was just on edge and such a mess. So anyway, if that's happened to you, my heart goes out to you. Um, So yeah, that was my uh, my new my new segment. Do- hashtag dog dick. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just when I think we've covered everything on this podcast, you find new things. <laughs> Dude, I thought it was bad when Maverick, my oldest dog, accidentally licked my bare butthole. I thought right. that was bad, and that right. was a couple years back. I'm like, it can't get any worse. My right. dog literally put his tongue on my asshole. This. So much worse. So much worse. I would take the ass lick any day, but this was truly a a moment of terror. Um, I mean, you like had full foreplay with your dog. So gross. I mean, seriously. And you know, God, I have told a lot of disgusting stories on this podcast and really making me realize, remember the story I told you about the accidental bestiality when my little pig sucked on my nipple on accident? I sure do. So, you know, I guess I've been in this territory before. (laughs) Yeah. Honestly, the fact that PETA has not shut this podcast down, I think it's just because you're a vegan that they're giving you a pass. They're like, look, she's done a lot for our community, but she really needs to get it together because we're concerned with whatever is going on behind the scenes. All right, this petition to cancel Delaney Fisher, too many dots of the animal under inappropriate animal interactions. Uh, with this. So yeah, so that was it for me. Um, God, you can't help that animals are sexually attracted to you. Apparently. Dude, what in the hell? If you are a vet, if you are a dog uh, parent of any kind, of, if this has happened to you and if you have any hot tips, please write into the podcast. <laughs> please. Well, he's going to have a mental breakdown if she has to oh, work her dog off again. Because I'm like, is this going to be a forever thing or is this going to be improved when he um, he's getting his little, he's getting neutered or fixed or his balls taken out soon. Oh, like, is that yeah, going yeah. to prevent it? Is that going to... Oh. Maybe it'll help. Yes. Wow. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> is it? <laughs> that's it. Okay. <laughs> to, to be continued. Um, might not want to let your pets near me. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, noted. Um, all right, guys. Uh, see you in Grand Rapids this weekend. <laughs> boy did we cover a lot of different things this episode um but we love you and we hope that you're having a great week and we will talk to you next week bye bye thank you so much for listening to the self-helpless podcast you can find our patreon community merch and our individual work at selfhelplesspodcast.com we'd be thrilled if you shared this episode with a friend or feel free to post it on instagram and tag at selfhelplesspodcast.com so we can repost you and say thank you.